All month long, we are celebrating black history. Tonight, a look at what was the beginning of the end of slavery in the United States. A bloody insurrection led by an African-American in Virginia 30 years before the Civil War. Ten on your side's Tom Shattery traces the slave rebellion and the movement to preserve this piece of hidden history. Tom. That's, that's right, Laura and Steph. This is a story about one of humanity's basic yearnings, a passion to be free. That's why historians want to save what's left from this deadly uprising in Southampton County. It began with visions of battle, interpreted as a message from God in a land where two out of five people were owned by someone else. Nat Turner and his fellow slaves had had enough. Everyone's at a boiling point, and that boiling point begins here. The self-proclaimed preacher and his followers made their mark in American history. Nat Turner's Rebellion. On the night of August 21st, 1831, Turner and his followers went on a killing spree against white slave owners. Nat Turner killed children. Nat Turner killed women. Nat Turner was indiscriminate in a brutal way of trying to spread fear throughout the county. But in Turner's mind, it was a fight for freedom, which is why historians in Southampton County are trying to preserve what's left of that August night. This is the last place Nat Turner and his followers will kill slave owners. The Rebecca Vaughn House now stands just outside Cortland. Vaughn was one of the last slave owners killed by Turner's men. And so they rushed upstairs and Will Francis was known as the executioner, cleft her in two with an ax. It was the end of a 20 mile ride where 58 whites were murdered. Twice as many African Americans were later executed without trial. Turner himself would be hanged for starting the insurrection. Is that Turner is my great, 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 third great grandfather. Bruce Turner grew up in these very hills and views what happened here as a battle for basic human rights. Nat Turner saw it as something wrong. He decided to do something about it. It was horrific. It created a lot of pain for both sides and he paid the price for it. So did the Francis family who lost 17 members that night in 1831. It almost wiped us all out. But Jeff Francis is rebuilding the house where another slave named Red saved his great, great, great grandmother and his family tree. Red came, came and grabbed Lavinia up and, and put her in this cubby hole, put a bunch of quilts and blankets and all in front of her. And the insurrectionists came up through the, through the house and they never found her. So that's, that's what saved our entire family. Jeff's brother Rick is a Southampton County Circuit Court clerk. He showed us the actual sword used by Turner during the rebellion. Francis says that Turner lit the fuse of revolution with a cosmic vision, but in the end, they were driven by the desire to be free. A desire that led to the ultimate price. He managed to achieve freedom by dying here because when he died, he was owned by no one. So in essence, Nat did die a free man. It is a remarkable piece of history. After the insurrection, Virginia lawmakers debated ending slavery, but to no avail. The local historical society also wants to develop an app that would let users retrace Nat Turner's rebellion. Tom Shad, 10 on your side. 